One face cleaned up I can have a better look at the, the piece of wood it's got a bit of a knot there which I'm not too concerned about but it's got some um, it's got some splitting there which could be a problem it comes right up to the edge just looking at it as well there's a pretty nasty it's a pretty nasty knot there right on the edge I'd probably rather get rid of that if I can the overall dimensions pretty close to 200 190 but I think that's probably too big for what I want to do I think um, around about 150 is probably a good finished size. So for, if I head first to try and cut out that knot there, and that's about 170. So I'll do the first pass and cut it down to 170 and see where we go from there and that'll give me another 20 mil to take off this edge. I thought I could run this beam over the jointer again on the um, opposite face. When I measured it, uh, it, it looked like it was fairly consistent. So I thought if I just uh, run it over the jointer, it should stay consistent. But that wasn't the case. It didn't work out that way at all. Um, after a few passes, if you can look here, uh, then in 66 millimeters and down this end, it, ended, it was ending up at 69 millimeters. So it wasn't, um, working out the way I wanted it to. The reason why I tried to face plane this board on the joint to is um, I just thought it was too big for my thickness planer and probably too big to manhandle on this edge on the table saw. But then I thought, well, you know, if there's any test for the thicknesser, then this would be it. And all I really need to do is extend the beds. So what I've done is um, grabbed a couple of pieces of that aluminium extrusion, extrusion that I have, sorry about that, and um, basically I'm going to put them into the machine and effectively lengthen the beds. So what I'll do is I'll bring the cutter head down just to rest gently on those, um, on those aluminium bars. The rollers will um, press onto the bars before the cutter head does. That's just to keep them in place and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pack underneath here so that um, they're still sitting very flat in the machine and then I'll just clamp them down to the bench and uh, yeah and then I'll be able to run that board through. Okay so you can see there I've done some uh, fairly precise packing to get these aluminium bars dead flat through the thicknesser. Now if we just take a look at the top, gee, you can't get much better than that. Just to show you how well that worked out, if I use the verniers to um, take a measurement down this end, and I think I've got 64 millimeters exactly. And if I take those verniers and take them up the other end and put them onto there, that's a very, very snug fit. That's perfect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is uh, route five grooves into the face of this beam. 
uh, almost the full length of the beam. I've got my 8mm or 516 bit in my router. And I want those five grooves to be spaced sort of evenly across the face of the, the beam. Unfortunately, just for the, outs, the two outside ones, I can't get my router quite far enough across just, just because of the width of this beam. So for those two only, I'll, uh, I'll take one side of the mortising jig off and um, I'll just clamp a uh, strip of timber right on the edge of this plate here. And then um, I can use it, I can use the full jig um, to do the three centre grooves. By just picking the whole setup up off the beam and swapping it over like I did for the second groove without changing any of the adjustment that meant that this groove ended up exactly the same distance from the edge as that groove and I use the same principle to do the two center grooves that sorry the two inside grooves and then lastly we'll just um, route the center groove I just need to drill the ends of these slots now all the way through to the back of the beam. So I'll just use my uh, eight mil brad point bit to do that. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, get the hole started right on the ends first. And then just to keep me going straight, I'll use this block with a um, that I drilled a hole in earlier on my drill press so I know it's straight. This old projector stand that I bought at a garage sale a while ago has come in pretty handy. Uh, you would have seen me use it before as an extension when I was using my um, crosscut sled to trim the ends of this beam off. And now I'm using it so that I can get the beam up onto my drill press because what I need to do down at this end is I need to take out a size of that square roughly there. I need to take that out down to about half the thickness of the beam. So I'm going to um, take out most of the material with a uh, large force in a bit and then I'll trim it up later with the, um, the router. I'm going to use this uh, following bit and uh, that's just going to run on that surface there that's already been routed and I'll just uh, be able to drop that down just to clean out the bottom of these uh, voids. Mm -hmm. 